Welcome to Thank God It's a Story Saturday, a weekly video series where I share stories with you that you can use to make your messages stick. A couple of days ago, I watched a video by Ryan Holiday, which presents the concept of a dead time or a lifetime, and it has nothing to do with death. This video really has the power to turn the bad into good, and who doesn't need that right now? After watching this video, I felt the responsibility of sharing this video with you. Dare I say, this is the best Saturday story for the moment. Hope you turn your bad into good by the power of this video. One of the most powerful concepts I've ever come across is the idea of a live time versus dead time. Robert Greene told me about it a number of years ago, and I have thought about it almost every day since. He said to me, Ryan, there are two types of time in this life. There is a live time and dead time. One is when you sit around. One is when you wait until things happen to you. One is where you're wasteful, you're passive, you're accepting. The other is when you are in control, when you make every second count, when you are learning and improving and growing. I feel like life is constantly asking us, is this going to be a live time for me or dead time? A long commute? Are we going to zone out and listen? A delayed flight? Are we going to get in a couple miles walking around the terminal or shove a Cinnabon in our face? A forced quarantine due to the worldwide pandemic that is COVID-19. Are we going to watch Netflix or are we going to seize this moment? Are we going to use every second we have? That is our call. We don't control that this happened, but we do control how we respond to it. Think of the story of Malcolm Little. In 1946, he was arrested for trying to fence an expensive watch he'd stolen. In his apartment, the police found jewelry and furs, an arsenal of guns and his burglary tools. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. And yes, he could have served that time simply counting the days. He could have planned his next crime spree. Instead, he started reading. He literally copied the dictionary word for word. Every minute he wasn't in his bunk, he was in the library. That was how Malcolm Little was transformed into Malcolm X. Do you know why Malcolm X wears glasses? Because he actually wore his eyes out in prison. But clearly, the trade-off was worth it. Those years he served were some of the most productive of his life. He breathed in every second while his fellow prisoners rotted away. Yes, he had plenty to be angry about. Yes, his sentence wasn't totally fair. Yes, America was horribly segregated and racist. And instead of focusing on all of the injustices in the situation, he owned where he'd made mistakes and he decided he would dedicate himself to improving, to being made better for what had happened. So many people are busy thinking about the future that they miss the opportunities right in front of them. Or so many people are upset about what has happened in the past that they ignore the present that has been given to them. We think that the future is something that happens rather than something we make. We think this is just a job. This is a crappy couple of months or minutes or weeks. It doesn't matter. I can kill this time and it will be over soon enough. We tell ourselves that we're doing this to pay for school or because we have to, that no good can come out of it, that we'd be better off doing something else. But as Robert Greene says, if you're going to think like that, you might as well be dead. You've already decided to turn off your mind. We have to choose to make every moment a moment of a lifetime. We have to decide to be present, to make the most of whatever is in front of us. Might it be better if we were totally free, if we weren't stuck inside, if the economy wasn't crashing, if our work hadn't furloughed us, if our kids were in school? Of course, but we aren't. So what are we gonna do about it? We have to find some advantage. That's the idea. It's not that every situation is good. It's that there is no situation so bad. There is no time so worthless that we can't make something of it. That's what a Stoic thinks about. That's how we become great. We say, as Jocko Wilnick says, we say yes to this moment. We seize it. We make the most of it, whatever it happens to be.